In the last 500 years, we know of almost 900 species that have been driven to extinction, and currently about 13% of bird species and 25% of mammal species are threatened with extinction. In 1888, the first known film was made, and since then, we've been recording life all around us. At times, humans have filmed things that they had no idea would soon be gone, and how important those films would prove to future generations. In this video, we're looking at eight recordings of animals before they went extinct. Welcome back to All About Nature. On my channel, I try to bring nature-related content that's both educational and entertaining. If you like this kind of content, then please consider liking the video, leaving a comment, or even subscribing to the channel. I want to say a special thanks to my patrons, including my newest patron, Colby. If you want to have a say in the content I make next, and have early access to my videos, consider supporting me on Patreon. The link is in the video description below. Now let's take a look at the videos. The ivory-billed woodpecker is the second largest species of woodpecker to ever live. They ranged across the southeastern United States and the island of Cuba, where they relied on old-growth forests for foraging and nesting. In fact, each pair of birds required about six square miles of intact forest to support them. As the forests were cleared for human settlement, the birds lost the large tracts of forest they needed to survive. Throughout the 19th century, their numbers declined, and by the early 20th century, they were so rare that people often called them the Holy Grail Bird, or the Lord God Bird, as this is what people often exclaimed upon seeing a bird as rare as the ivory-billed woodpecker. The last accepted sighting of the species in the United States was in 1944, while the last sighting of the Cuban ivory-billed woodpecker was in 1987. In 1935, only nine years before they vanished from the U.S., Arthur A. Allen saw this pair of ivory-billed woodpeckers on the Singer Tract in Louisiana. He snapped a few photographs. Thankfully, he also took this video of the species. While this is the last known confirmed video of the ivory-billed woodpecker, it's important to note that the species is not yet classified as extinct. There have been many unconfirmed sightings over the years, and many believe that it's still surviving somewhere out there. But as of yet, no sightings in the U.S. have been accepted since 1944. Another species on this list that is assumed extinct, though not yet classified as such, is the Baiji. This river dolphin was native to the Yangtze River in China. In Chinese folklore, the Baiji was the reincarnation of a beautiful young girl who died as she escaped from her stepfather by jumping into the river. The species was nicknamed the Goddess of the Yangtze and was considered to be the protector of fishermen. But beginning in the 1950s, China began its Great Leap Forward. This was an economic and social campaign led by the Chinese Communist Party. While the country saw major economic growth, it also began to secularize under government pressure, and people stopped venerating the Baiji as a goddess. The population of China exploded, and the Yangtze River began to be used more and more for fishing and transportation. The Baiji was regularly struck by ships and killed for meat and leather. The river became polluted, and the Baiji population shrank extremely quickly. By the 1980s, they were practically gone from the river system, and it was known by scientists that the Baiji would likely be the first species of cetacean to go extinct solely because of human pressures. In 1994, the Chinese government delivered another blow to the species when they began construction on the Three Gorges Dam. The massive project cut straight through the Yangtze and was later determined to have played a direct role 
in the disappearance of the Baiji. A survey for the Baiji in 1997 found only 13 dolphins. The last confirmed evidence of a wild Baiji was a photograph from 2002. But going back to 1980, a two-year-old Baiji was accidentally caught in a fishing net. He was taken to the Institute of Hydrobiology at the Chinese Academy of Sciences, where he was raised and studied for 23 years. He was named Kiki, and this video of him in captivity was likely taken towards the end of his life. Interestingly, he died in 2002, the same year of the last confirmed wild sighting. The Baiji is almost certainly already gone. And if it is still holding on, there would only be a few left. The fragmentation of their habitat and the lack of genetic diversity means that even if a few are still alive, the species will never recover. Paddlefish are very large river fish, most closely related to sturgeons. They have distinctive elongated rostra, which they use to detect prey in the murky river habitats that they live in. These paddles actually generate an electric field, and they're able to detect the electrical stimuli of other fish and crustaceans nearby using this unique physical feature. There are eight known species, of which only two survived into modern times. Of those two, one, the American paddlefish, lives in the Mississippi River Basin of the United States and is still found in 22 states today. The other species that survived to modern times is the Chinese paddlefish. Like the Baiji, it lived throughout the Yangtze River Basin. It was one of the largest freshwater species of fish in the world with specimens regularly reaching 3 meters in length, though it's believed to have been able to reach lengths as long as 7 meters. The Chinese paddlefish had been caught in high numbers from as far back as the 13th century. But again, with the beginning of the Great Leap Forward in the 1950s, the paddlefish was exploited like never before. As much as 25 tons of fish were being pulled out of the river system into the 1970s, before the species declined so fast, it was on the brink of extinction. In 1985, only 32 Chinese paddlefish were caught in the Yangtze River Basin. The final straw for the species was the construction of the Three Gorges Dam and the Gazuba Dam. Both stopped the movement of the fish through the river system, which they needed to do in order to breed. The last time any young were seen was in 1995. Around this time, it was determined that the species was functionally extinct, meaning that the numbers were so low and their habitat so altered that the paddlefish stood no chance of recovering. This video is from a Chinese documentary called Saving the Giant Fish, which was released in 2003. It showed the efforts of Chinese conservationists, particularly Professor Wei Qi Wei, as he worked in a last-ditch effort to save the species. Because I don't personally understand Chinese, I'm not sure if this is a captive fish being released or a wild fish being relocated, but this is some of the only known footage of the Chinese paddlefish that exists. It's believed that sometime between 2005 and 2010, the last Chinese paddlefish died. And in July of 2022, the species was declared extinct by the IUCN. Between 15 and 20 million years ago, a family of birds emerged on a set of volcanic islands in the middle of the Pacific. This family, the Mahoidae, became known as the Hawaiian honey eaters, and at least seven different species developed. They were spread out across the islands, where they fed primarily on the nectar of flowers. Early Polynesian settlers of Hawaii 
regularly hunted birds for meat. And at least one of the species of honey eater is known to have been hunted to extinction before European contact. In 1778, with the first arrival of Europeans, there was an introduction of species that would cause major changes to the ecology of the island chain. Cats, rats, mongooses, and most devastatingly for the birds, mosquitoes, were all introduced. Mosquitoes carried with them diseases that the birds of Hawaii had never encountered before, and populations were quickly decimated. The huge influx of new settlers also meant that large portions of the forest were cleared. Of the six species of honey eater that still lived on the islands, four were extinct by the 20th century. In 1934, the last Hawaii o'o was seen, leaving only one living species of the entire family, the Kauai o'o. The Kauai o'o lived only on the island of Kauai, and it made its nests in the hollows of large trees. As the mosquitoes took over lowland forests, the birds were pushed higher up the mountains. Unfortunately, the trees at higher altitudes lacked sufficient cavities for nesting. Few, if any, of the birds were able to produce young, and by the 1960s, less than 40 still existed. In the 1970s, John L. Sincock captured this video. It's the only known footage of the Kauai O'o. He also made recordings of their calls. The last pair of the species was found in 1981, and in 1982, Hurricane Iwa came through, killing the last female. The last male remained in the forest for five more years, where he was occasionally heard still singing for a mate. He was recorded for the last time in 1987, and no one has seen or heard the Kauai O'o since. In the year 2000, the IUCN declared the species extinct, bringing the last of the seven species in this ancient family of birds to an end. This is the first entire family of bird species to go extinct in modern times. Of the 142 endemic Hawaiian bird species, 95 have been driven to extinction. And now I'm going to tell you about two more. About 1,500 kilometers northwest of Honolulu, in the Hawaiian archipelago, is the tiny island of Laysan. Measuring only a little over four square kilometers, the island is presently mostly sand, and its highest elevation is only 15 meters, measured at the top of a sand dune. At the center of the island is a lake that's as much as three times saltier than the ocean. The island is host to a number of endemic species and subspecies, including the Laysan Millerbird, the Laysan Duck, the Laysan Finch, the Laysan Honeycreeper, and the Laysan Rail. The Laysan Honeycreeper was a unique species and was bright red to brown in color. They fed primarily on nectar, and they built their nests in thick patches of grass. The Laysan Rail was a small flightless bird that was dull gray and brown. While they likely lived on many of the Hawaiian islands at some point, they were gone from all but Laysan Island by the time Europeans arrived. A small population was also introduced to Midway Atoll at some point in the early 20th century. Laysan Island used to be covered in lush vegetation. When it was in its prime, at least 1,000 Laysan honeycreepers and 2,000 Laysan rails called the island home. But when the decision was made to introduce rabbits to the island in the early 1900s as a means of supplying meat to the people of the islands, the local vegetation was devastated. By 1910, the island had been converted into a dust bowl. Even the rabbits were struggling to survive. With the disappearance of the vegetation, 
the birds of the island quickly began to die off. In the late 1910s, the Laysan Millerbird was the first to go extinct. No video of this subspecies was ever recorded. In 1923, the Tanager expeditions took place. It was a series of five expeditions to the northern islands of Hawaii. The objective of the expeditions was to eradicate the rabbits in an effort to save endangered species. In the process, they recorded species they came across, discovered multiple new species, and found over 100 important Hawaiian archaeological sites. When they came to Laysan Island, they recorded this video of the Laysan honeycreeper. This is the only surviving footage of the species, and when it was filmed, only three of the birds were still living on the island. A storm that passed through later that year killed all three of them, and the species was extinct. The crew of the expedition knew that the Laysan rail was suffering on the island as well, so they had gathered eight rails from the introduced population at Midway Atoll to bring back to Laysan. When they released the rails, they filmed this video. And it's the only surviving footage of the species today. At least two of the introduced rails died immediately after release due to lack of shelter and water on Laysan Island. And the remaining were likely dead by the end of the year. Over on Midway Atoll, that small population of Laysan rails was still surviving. But on December 7, 1941, Pearl Harbor was bombed by Japan, ushering the start of the United States' participation in World War II. In 1943, U.S. Navy ships were sent to Midway Atoll, and with them came black rats. For the first time ever, a species of terrestrial mammal made it onto the tiny atoll, and this was the end of the Laysan Rail. The rats ate their eggs, and the last rail was seen on Midway Atoll in June of 1944. The Greater Prairie Chicken is a large member of the grouse family, native to the United States and Canada. What makes them unique is the display of the males. Male prairie chickens have orange feathers above the eyes, and two unfeathered neck patches that are also orange. On top of their heads, are two sets of elongated feathers that they raise, giving them the appearance of having horns. They display for females and compete with other males by inflating these neck patches, raising the feathers on their heads, slapping their tails, and fighting in a special territory called a lek. The greater prairie chicken has three subspecies. The main subspecies, which carries the name greater prairie chicken, is the most abundant though now limited to a fraction of its former range in the central part of the United States. Another subspecies is Atwater's prairie chicken. It's endangered and currently restricted to the coastal regions of the state of Texas. The third subspecies was the heath hen, which was found along the Atlantic coast of the United States. It was distinct enough from the others that some scientists argue that it was in fact a completely separate species Heath hens were smaller, had more red in their plumage, grayish-brown tails, and thicker barring through their breast and sides. Because the human population of North America was heavily concentrated along the Atlantic coast, the heath hens were some of the first game birds in the U.S. to be hunted regularly. Adding to this, rapid habitat loss caused the species to be wiped off the mainland by 1870. The last of the birds survived on the island of Martha's Vineyard in the U.S. state of Massachusetts. At the time of their mainland extinction, about 300 heath hens survived on Martha's Vineyard. But due to the presence of feral cats and the ongoing hunting of the birds, within 20 years their population had halved. By the turn of the century, the birds had further declined to only 70 individuals. Local people became aware of the plight of the heath hen and determined that they needed to save it. It became one of the first species of birds that Americans tried to save from extinction. In 1908, a total ban on heath hen hunting was put in place, and the birds were given official protection. 
there was a heath hen reserve established on the eastern side of the island, and their numbers quickly bounced back. As many as 2,000 heath hens were living on the reserve by 1915, and tourists regularly visited their lecking grounds to watch their mating displays. But in 1916, all of that changed. A combination of factors spelled the end of the heath hen. For one, a fire swept through the reserve during nesting season, and the same year, winters were particularly harsh. There were also an abnormal number of goshawks in the area that season, leading to more birds falling prey to the raptors than normal. That season also produced an excess of male birds, meaning less females for reproduction. And at the same time, an epidemic of blackhead disease swept through the population, likely introduced from domestic poultry. By 1927, only 11 males and two females remained. And this video was filmed around the same time. It was made public in 2012 and shows some of the last males displaying and fighting for mates. On March 11, 1932, the last heath hen was observed on his lecking ground. He was affectionately called Booming Ben, and within a few hours of the last sighting, he died from unknown causes. While the heath hen was lost, it paved a way for a surge of American conservation efforts that benefited countless endangered species across the country. The most famous video of an extinct species has to be all the footage of Benjamin, the last captive thylacine. This footage of Benjamin was recorded in 1935, only about a year before he died in September 1936. Thylacines were carnivorous marsupials that looked like dogs, but were in fact more closely related to animals like kangaroos, quolls, and Tasmanian devils. The current theory on their decline and disappearance in New Guinea and mainland Australia is a changing climate. And once British settlers arrived to Tasmania, it wasn't long before farmers grew to fear them, eventually hunting them to the point of extinction. Or at least that's what some people think. Many in fact believe that the thylacine is still alive out there. If you want to hear the full story of the thylacine, and see some of the videos and pictures of reported sightings from the last few decades, check out my video on the topic. You'll find the link on the end screen. And that's it for today's video. Do you know of any other extinct species that we have video footage of? Let me know so I can possibly make a part two. And if you enjoyed the video, help me out by leaving a like and a comment. This helps my content reach a wider audience. And if you want to come back for the next video, feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.